Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I'll be in Lightroom Classic today, and I'm gonna do something that I really honestly don't really ever do in Lightroom, and that is building an HDR image. I tend to do those in Luminar, that's the app that I use the most and do my HDRs in the most, but I was playing around with uh, an HDR bracket set build that HDR in uh, Lightroom, and I realized a few things. When I'm building an HDR, there's a couple things I want to achieve and or look for in what I can do with that blended photo. The first thing, of course, is I wanna make sure that the blended result is natural, Lightroom does a great job of that. Uh, secondly, I wanna have really good masking tools, and that's a huge, huge deal. And of course, Lightroom masking tools are great, give you the ability to really control your image. And I also wanna have not just the ability to control light, but the ability to control and adjust color in a really fine-tuned sort of way. Again, a real strength of Lightroom. And so that's what I'll be doing in this video is walking through blending three exposures, making an HDR and doing some adjustments to it and showing you how I kind of approach that. Now, if you want to understand more about how I use Lightroom, I've got a free 17-page guide. It's available at the link down below. I give that to anyone that joins my newsletter. And by the way, speaking of newsletter, I'm also building out an HDR guidebook that'll be applicable whether you use Luminar or Lightroom or other apps full of tips, tricks, and that sort of thing from my 15 years or so of creating HDR photos. That'll be coming in the next few weeks or month or so. Anyway, you get all that for free uh, by subscribing to my newsletter. Again, link down below. Let's get into today's content, and that is a starting with a bracket set. This is uh, three exposures shot in Iceland. So there's the dark one. It's a negative five exposure. There's the medium one, negative three, and there's the bright one, negative one. You may notice that that's not the typical negative two, zero, plus two. I talk about that in that ebook. I'm not a fan necessarily of centering my exposures. I prefer to uh, shoot them a little darker, basically. By the way, we're gonna end up creating something that looks a bit like that. And as you can see, you get a lot of light and color control in Lightroom thanks to the masking tools and some of the other tools. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start out by grabbing the three exposures. I've highlighted those. I right click and I will go here to Photo Merge and HDR. Now you can see it's going to go ahead and align the images. I use Auto Align, of course, and also Auto Settings. If you untick that, it won't apply uh, basic settings to it. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It doesn't always come out, and including in this photo, it doesn't always come out exactly how I want it to, but it gives me a nice start. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't really need deghosting. This is a canyon in Iceland. There's really nothing moving other than the water. I don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit merge, and it's gonna blend those three together and give me a nice base HDR exposure. It's almost done creating that HDR, and then it's gonna drop it right here. And here we go, there is the photo. I'm gonna go ahead and go into develop. And you will see here in basic, it's already got some adjustment settings. So before and after, that's technically the middle exposure, I believe. But this is the edits blended to HDR plus uh, various adjustments. Now I wanna fine tune these. Like I said, it doesn't always work out exactly the way I want. So I'm gonna uh, reduce that exposure a little bit. I'm actually gonna increase the contrast a little bit. I go to about 19 or so. The highlights, I'm coming down to 100. Uh, the shadows, I'm gonna do about a 72. And then the whites, I think, yeah, about a 14. So the numbers don't really matter. Um, I just, I use my eyeball and I also just look at the histogram to try to decide whatever it is I wanna do. I'm gonna add a, just a smidge of clarity. I typically reserve that for uh, masking specific things, but a very small amount of four, I think is no big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce vibrance and saturation to zero. I tend to prefer to add color and color enhancements with other apps. And I tend to do that across the whole image. The other thing, though, is I want to adjust the temperature and tint. I ended up dropping this and making it a little bit cooler. And the tint is actually going to go a little bit more to the right. Uh, as you can see here, I think you can tell that uh, this was a 14 in my notes. There we go. Uh, the sun had just dropped right over this distant hill. And so I was just trying to give a little bit of that sunset effect. So even though I made the overall scene cooler, it wasn't like a crazy bright, warm sunset, uh, partly due to all those uh, clouds. But I do like to give a little bit of tint uh, when I, in my sunsets. So I just think it looks good. So before and after, I think that's a good start. Let me get a couple of spots out and then we'll keep going. Okay. I think that's fine in terms of spots. I'm sure I missed some, but there were a couple right in the middle of the sky that were driving me kind of bananas. Uh, so as I said at the beginning of this video, one of the key things for me is of course masking and the masking in Lightroom is really good. I use it all the time and I use it a lot and I talk about it in all my Lightroom videos, which you can find in that playlist. But I'm gonna admit 
the masking that I do in this video is not complex at all. So if you don't understand masking or you're not very advanced, it doesn't matter. You can do so much with just pretty simple masks. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually put a mask in the sky. I want to make some adjustments there. You may, may be tempted to click on sky because it does a pretty accurate job of grabbing the entire sky. I tend not to do that. I tend to use a linear gradient in the sky. And the reason why is uh, that word gradient. It gives me the ability to fade the effect. And what I want to do is fade the effect, what I'm going to do, into the photo a little bit. And I just need to tilt this a little bit. And that gives me the ability to have it not be a uniform adjustment. If I use the sky mask, it grabs the sky, but 100% of my edit goes into every single bit of the sky. I don't want to do that. I want to fade it a little bit. So I tend to use linear gradients in the sky. I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit. And that's one of the reasons I like these linear gradients, because it's going to just fade that uh, reduction in exposure across the sky there. And I'm going to go into temperature and tint. I'm going to go slightly warmer and again, slightly more tint, this time just in the sky as opposed to across the entire photo, which is what I did in the basic tab uh, in the beginning. And texture and clarity, I'm going to drop these a little bit just to smooth it out. That is uh, just a personal preference because I just kind of like smoother skies. But I am going to do something I don't normally do, which is actually bump up the saturation. I don't always use a saturation slider in any app. But it kind of works for me here and it's still pretty minor overall so if you look at the before and after before and after being able to fade that with a gradient allows me to kind of contain some of the light up here without making it really rigid uh, in terms of the uh, where the mask is applied i get the ability to fade it into the photo instead of just being specific and targeted and that's why i don't really use the sky mask because that would make it a uniform adjustment and I want to fade the adjustment. That's really the big difference. So now just having said that about sky mask, I'm actually going to go get a sky mask and I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and click to create a new mask. This is mask number two and I'm going to select sky. And this is where I do use sky masks. And that is what I want to do now is make adjustments to the foreground. So the exact opposite of the sky. So in this case, you could, of course, get a linear gradient and drag it up and across the foreground up to the you know roughly the edge of the uh, of the distant hills but for me it's just as easy and probably more easy to just grab that sky and then you just uh, click on these three dots and invert mask two and now i've got a mask completely in the foreground almost 100 percent perfect there's a little bit up here with the brush i could remove in the interest of time i'm not going to do that but it's very simple to do so now that i've set this up and i've got this mask in place I'm going to add a little bit of texture and clarity because I want to bring up a little bit of that of a appearance of detail and a little bit of that crunch in that foreground to give it a little bit of that um, structure, if you want to use that term. But the other thing that's really cool, and again, I said this in the beginning of the video, is being able to control colors, is you have something called point color, which is a fabulous, fabulous color tool in Lightroom. And because it's built into the mask, it's not going to affect the sky. It's only going to affect the foreground. So I'm going to come in and you have the ability to just grab these little uh, eyedroppers and you come in. And what I'm going to start with is this kind of white stone. And I'm going to click there. And all I really want to do is increase the luminance. And so I'm going to bump that up like 40 or 50. All I'm doing there is making that brighter. And, you know, if it picks up a little bit of blue saturation, because it's kind of in the blues, you can drop that saturation slider if you want to because I don't want the rocks to appear blue, uh, but I do want them to be brighter. And so that's a great way to do that. But of course you can use it again and again. So I'm gonna grab another eyedropper and I'm gonna get some of this yellow green over here. And what I wanna do is drop that hue because um, I don't really like that yellow green a whole lot, but I do like kind of a more rust color. And so I'm gonna go negative on the hue, which is gonna get me closer to the oranges and or reds. A Little bit of bump in saturation. So to give that a little bit of pop, and a little bit of bump in luminance to make it slightly brighter as well. So just some minor adjustments here in point color. But if you look at the before and the after, you can see the brightening there really pops, right? So before and after, before and after. But then you're also getting a nice kind of warmer tone here. And these uh, bits of moss or lichen or whatever they may be in that distant hill, they're just picking up a little bit better color. So overall, this mask has had a pretty nice impact on the photo before and after. And only one more mask. I told you these are not going to be complicated masks. I'm just going to get a radial gradient and I'm going to drag that here in the center and I'm going to make it 
you know, let's see, about like that. I want to tilt it, and I'm going to tilt it a little bit more. All I'm trying to do is draw a little bit more attention to that center section of the canyon, because as you're taking this shot, or as I'm taking the shot, I'm following, my composition is set up where the water flows in and kind of flows through and hopefully naturally leads the viewer's eye through the photo in that way. But I also want to accentuate that a little bit with this mask. And so that mask is going to get a little bit of an exposure increase. So maybe half a stop or something. So something maybe like that. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Pull that down a little bit. Uh, but a little bit of clarity as well. So I'm going to drop the color and point color sections and go into clarity and give that a little bit of a bump. So maybe a 20 or 21. Something like that. So if you look at the before and the after. There we go a little bit brighter, a little bit more pop, and that's it for mask. Honestly, it's simple, straightforward, targeted sky with a linear gradient, foreground with an inverted sky mask, and then a radial gradient in the center just to create a little bit more attention. But before and after with masking, and I think we're coming along pretty nicely. And now this is where I start getting into some of the fun. Uh, and for me, fun is often about adjusting colors, which Lightroom does incredibly well, and calibration which is the king of color tools, in my opinion, in Lightroom. I love it. I use it all the time, and I uh, uh, just I just love it. I mean, honestly, it's so, so powerful. So I'm going to start with blue, and I end up, and these are just numbers that I ended up getting to via experimentation. But I ended up doing like, a, you know, a little bit mid-negative mid on the hue, which creates a little bit more of that orange, kind of leaning into that rust-type color that I applied earlier, and then bumping up the saturation. You'll notice it's blue primary is all I moved. It didn't make the photo blue. I've, I've made videos about this tool before. I recommend checking some of those out. And because uh, this is adjusting uh, color values at the pixel level, the RGB values in every pixel, and it just has a really powerful effect on your photo. The uh, saturation of the green primary is going to go up a little bit. And I think the hue is going left. Yes, it is. So something about like that. Uh, and then I'm also going to use the red. And I just, I do recommend being a little bit careful if you, if you use all tools, which I'm using all three of them here. You want to be careful that you don't overdo it. It's pretty easy to push this kind of far. But uh, this is where I ended up here, something about like this. Uh, and so I've got a lot more kind of yellow orange kind of look, which I think fits well with the blue that I kind of have in the, mostly in the sky. And you can see uh, there's a tiny bit of a blue tint to this. Remember, I've already got a mask on that, so if I want to adjust that, I can go back and do that in the mask, but I think it looks fine. But if you look at the before and after for calibration, there it is, a lot more green, a little bit more muted, and then the after, a bit more orangey yellow, a little bit more saturated, and I like that look. Now, having done that, I'm gonna go into color grading, and what I often do is go into these shadows, and shadows for me are, uh, oops, not saturation, I need to go into hue. I wanna get about a 230, which is a, which is a blue, and then I'm going to give a little bit of saturation bump to that. And all that's doing is just increasing the blue in the shadows. Because to me, shadows by definition are darker. And darker means cooler to me. So it just, it just creates a little bit more of that look. I'm actually going to pull that saturation down. Because I do see it's impacting some of these rocks over here. And I don't want to make too much of that. Uh, but then in the highlights, I'm going to do a little bit of the opposite. I think my hue here is like in the mid-20s. And then the saturation is going to be like 10 or 12. Uh, all I'm doing is creating a little bit of warmth in the highlights, which is hitting some of these areas, hitting a little bit of the sky as well. Just a little bit of color grading. So before and after, just a minor kind of shift there. Uh, but one thing that's happened is this is just a little too orange and saturated, and so is that. This is where color mixer comes in. And this is point color again, which also is in the masking tool, but comes in really handy when you're doing some finishing touches. I'm going to grab that. Uh, color and I just want to take that saturation down a little bit. So it's a little too much So something like that and that's lessening all of that all of this So maybe I'll give that back just a little bit But you have a lot of power and a lot of control with the point color now This is applying globally, but it's really mostly in the foreground Like I said, I could go back to my mask that I did for the foreground and do it that way But I think it's okay to, to apply it across the entire photo in this case so before and after. It's a pretty minor difference, but it's it's a muted change, but I think it looks good overall. But I am kind of playing the, the warm and the cool tones off of each other here, which I think uh, comes in handy. And for me, the last thing is really going into effects and just applying a vignette. I want to darken those edges. I tend to prefer a little bit of a rounder vignette, and I tend to like high feathering. But if you look at the effect that the vignette has on the image, obviously it's darkening the edges. That's the whole point. So before 
and after. And that plays in, I think, pretty nicely with what I did earlier with this radial gradient here in the center, which is really just pop that center to create a little bit more visual in interest and attention there, darken the edges, which also is kind of complementing that. And overall, I have a what I consider a really interesting and impactful HDR, nice color balance across the image, nice light distribution, which is part, partly through the HDR process, but also through the masking and the other adjustments. And you can take, again, center exposure, and you can take multiple exposures blended very naturally in Lightroom. And then with the masking and the light control and the color tools with color control, you really can kind of create whatever it is that you want and you have a lot of power and control over it. So I've been doing more and more Lightroom uh, HDR images lately. I wanted to make a video about it because I don't think I've ever done one, but it's powerful, it works well. And uh, hopefully this is giving you some ideas about how to do that. Like I said, join my newsletter down below if you'd like to get my free 17-page book about Lightroom, plus the upcoming HDR guidebook that I'm building, and that will uh, hopefully give you some pointers and insights based on my years of experience playing with this app and also with, um, with HDR photos. Having said all that, that's what I was going to cover in this video, my friends. I thank you very much for hanging out with me. I'll be back soon with more stuff. Leave comments, questions down below. I'll see you soon. And until then, my friends, you guys take care and adios.